Hey everybody, thanks for stopping by my channel today, and today I got something a little special for you. Usually I'm digging into packet traces, and we're tearing apart Wireshark, and we're looking at TCP and such, but today I thought we'd sit down and have a little one-on-one -on, -one on what it's like to become a packet head. I want to talk to you about my journey, and how you can get on the road to reading and understanding Wireshark 2. So stick around. So in conversations that I've had with some of you in the audience out there is how did I become a packet head or a packet analyst and how can you do the same? So I thought I'd take a few minutes and go ahead and shoot a video and tell you a little bit about my story. Now, one thing I noticed pretty early on in my career as a network engineer, that's how I cut my teeth, so to speak, CCNA track and doing network engineering. It was the ones that were really able to get to the root of an issue. Uh, I used to travel around and set up temporary networks at trade shows and I was able to work with different experts from all over the industry. Uh, there are people from all different vendors, all different uh, types of experience levels and I found that the packet people, the ones that were able to look into packets and really understand what was happening on the wire, in most cases they were the ones with the answers. So we'd bring in a Cisco guy and he'd check out the network and he was able to check uh, the buffers and check throughput and make sure that routing was working well. Uh, the server teams would come in and their services would be working well and check out their virtual environment and look like they had enough resource and um, the SQL database was working fine and people were able to check their silo. But what I noticed is that these packet heads, or at least that's what I called them, these packet people were able to take a look at the network traffic and really figure out down at the wire level what was really happening. Uh, not just to exonerate one part of the whole, so I'm a network guy, I want to get the blame off my network. Going beyond that, they were able to really dig in and find down to the hexadecimal value what was happening and why the problem was occurring. And they were able to really find the resolution. So for me, once I saw that, I was hooked. I thought, this is incredible. Uh, to be able to see the traffic, to be able to understand the protocols and really be able to walk that line between or bridge that gap is probably a better way to say it, uh, between network person, server person, or even developer. So for me, that's where I've tried to really develop myself as an analyst rather than exonerating just one part of the whole, really finding and digging in and finding out root cause. So like me, no doubt you found, it's not hard to have a passion for packet analysis, but the art comes in understanding what they're saying. So if you feel frustrated sometimes when you look at Wireshark, sometimes you open up the trace and you feel like everyone else knows what's going on but you, don't worry. I've had exactly the same feelings. When I open up a trace and I don't understand what's going on, especially back when I was getting started, it was a long road to really being able to interpret the Wireshark output. So stick with it. It's just like learning a language, really. You think about maybe a language that you may have learned. Uh, it takes time, it takes practice, and if you don't use it, you lose it. Same thing with Wireshark. You're learning the language of how computers communicate. It takes time to understand what they say, why they say it. Uh, there's even different dialects amongst languages, and those nuances of language take time to get used to. So in the same way, be patient. If you're a network engineer, Start capturing that traffic that's traversing your network. Don't be content with just saying, hey, it's not the network. Find out what it really is by understanding those protocols. If you're a developer and you need to use a TCP stack with whatever it is you're designing, understand how that TCP stack works. Uh, when you turn those nerd knobs, so to speak, when you make those adjustments to the TCP windows or uh, you're able to adjust certain settings in there, understand what they mean. Make sure that you know when I adjust this, this is going to be the impact to the application over the network. So really, that's why I have this channel, to help you get better experience and learn some of the things that I've had to learn along the way with doing packet analysis. So just wanted to take a few minutes with you to tell you a bit more about my story. Thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you on another video.